Hi everyone, I hope you are staying well. My name is Madeline Martin and I am a community artist. And the project that I created for today uses found materials, driftwood, and maybe some paper that you have in your house. Um, you can also use branches. So let me show you the project. Um, so some of you may have seen in your neighborhoods that in a lot of windows and throughout the world really right now people are posting hearts on their windows to signify unity during this COVID-19 shutdown. Um, so really it's pretty simple. We will be painting a branch or a piece of driftwood that you find ahead of time on a nature walk with your family. Um, you might just have branches in your backyard like we do right now. Lots of trees are shedding this time of year. Um, and we'll be just cutting out some paper hearts and using embroidery floss and needles to tie it all together. But um, one important thing that we'll be doing is um, I'm, I'll be giving you the option of turning these into a family gratitude mobile. So maybe your family can take some time to jot down things for which you're all grateful for, whether individually or as a family. And then you can hang it up in your house as a reminder of the things um, for which you have gratitude. Research shows that people who have an active gratitude practice tend to um, report greater feelings of happiness and well-being. So hopefully that will bring a little comfort to you and your family during this time. So let's get started. Um, so our materials. Just to go over this really quick, materials are branches, driftwood, embroidery floss, and needles, paper. It can be really any paper. It can be scrapbook paper. It can be paper that you've already painted on and that you'll be um, cutting apart into hearts. It can be magazine paper, really whatever you have in your household. We'll need some type of paint for the branches, but I guess that's optional too. You wouldn't really have to paint your branches or driftwood. Um, but if you use paints, probably acrylic or maybe even leftover latex paint that you have from painting um, your interior exterior. Um, brushes then to go with that paint. And then Sharpies, pens or markers for writing out your gratitude on the hearts. And then scissors for cutting out the hearts. So let's begin with the first step, which is collect branches. I'll just show you the steps. Um, so step one, collect branches. Step two, write down a gratitude list. Step three, we'll paint the branch. Step four, cut out hearts and write the list of um, things for which you're grateful for on those individual hearts. Step five, Using needle and thread, attach hearts to the painted branch. Okay, so I just wanted to show you some of the driftwood that my family found. Um, they can be smaller, longer. I tend to like pieces that are a little bit more organic and have um, a little character to them, but it's really your preference. Um, I already painted a couple with my daughter, so just to give you some ideas, this stick we did ombre, so it's like reddish color to a really, really light pink. Then my daughter painted this one with the gray, gold, and turquoise. And I painted this one with turquoise and gold, and I left some of the branch exposed, which is an option. Um, you might choose to write words or um, paint images on it as well. We just kind of made ours um, design oriented, but it's really up to you and what um, your aesthetic preferences are. So let's get started by painting one of the branches. I think I'll use a smaller one today. And I actually have this cardboard palette. So if you have any cardboard in your house, we have a lot of cardboard in our house because we've been getting lots of items delivered. I'm sure some of you are in that same boat. So maybe you could just use cardboard as your palette. And really, you know, this part doesn't take too long. So 
but just paint the branch on all sides, however you like. I might do this one sort of a stripes pattern. And then you can kind of circle the branch around so that you can get all sides painted. Okay. But I think I'll just do three purple stripes on this branch. So just three purple stripes. Okay, sometimes I'll put my brush in my water so the brush doesn't dry up. And I'll add a few accents of gold. Okay, so you probably will take a little bit longer. I was sort of hastily painting mine, um, but pause at any time if you need to to come back to the next step. And by all means, use more than two colors. Maybe you just use one color. And again, you don't have to paint it at all. It's really up to you. So I will set that aside to dry. And while the branch is, the branch is drying, is the time I would like to encourage all of you to write out your gratitude list. So just jot down some things for which you're grateful. And then after you've done that, take some of your paper and maybe you can fold your paper in half to create a heart template. And so there's one heart. Um, and I would suggest you cut out anywhere from 10 to 20 hearts. And once you have cut out all of your hearts, then you can start writing some things for which you are grateful for. Um, so, some of the things that I'm grateful for include playing soccer with my daughter. I love to get outside and um, just get some exercise. So, I wrote down playing soccer with my daughter on this heart. Um, maybe you could think of something as simple as a favorite family food, something that connects you with the family. Um, I know my favorite part of the day is usually dinner with my family. It's a really great time for us to reconnect after we've all kind of done our own thing all day. So my favorite food is Ethiopian. So I'll say eating Ethiopian food with my family. So I wrote eating Ethiopian food with my family on this heart. Um, it can be really anything. It can be the small moments, having a cup of hot tea in the morning. It can be getting a hug from your child. It can be having witnessed something in nature, like maybe you got to watch some birds outside your window, or maybe you saw a deer in your backyard or on a walk. I'm grateful for Lake Michigan. That's always on one of my um, lists of gratitude. It's one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, and I feel like we're really lucky in Milwaukee to live right next to it. 
So Lake Michigan is definitely going to make it on my gratitude heart mobile. Um, so I think now we'll attach our hearts. I was going to make this a two-part video, but maybe we can um, fit it into one. So let's, I'm going to take one of the branches that I had already created and already dried because you want to make sure your branch is dry before you attach the heart. So in this step, you will want to thread a needle, which I've already done. And this is just embroidery floss that most people um, have in their house. And if you don't have embroidery floss, I just recently ordered some embroidery floss from Fish Burgers and they are doing deliveries right now. So that's one option of a place where you can maybe get some embroidery floss if you don't have any. Um, so let me show you a quick example of other hearts that I made with my family too. So we made some watercolor paintings that we then cut apart into hearts. So I want to show you that as an option as well to kind of um, spark your creativity of all the possibilities. And you can write the gratitude right on the watercolor paintings if you'd like, um, once the hearts are cut out. And you could probably use any, any kind of paper, like found items to, like if you have a letter or mail, something that you would wanna use that's meaningful to you and your family. Feel free to do that too, just get creative. Um, now to attach the hearts, what we wanna do is create this suspended row of hearts. And now I knotted my embroidery floss um, twice, right at the end, so that it catches when we go through the first heart. The first heart we're going through will be the bottom heart. Um, you know, I think I'm going to actually use the rainbow colored hearts that we had made previously out of cut apart watercolor paper. So I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to just go right through the paper. So the needle has gone right through the paper. I'll pull the floss through and it, the knot catches on the back. And so then what I'm going to do is sort of do this figure four knot. So I'll make a little loop. I don't know if you can see that little loop. And then I'll bring my needle right through. And of course, when I do it on camera, <laughs> it's not going to turn out quite the way I intend. Actually, you know what? We don't do it on this one. I'm sorry. That one can just dangle like that. I'm going to do it on the next one. So I'll take a an orange heart that I have, and we're going to just pierce right through the top of the heart like this, and we'll pull all the way down. So maybe leave two or three inches between hearts. It's really up to you and your creative preference. Here is where we make the figure four. So it's kind of like this little loop that we're creating, and then we slide the needle through the loop. And then it catches, or it doesn't. <laughs> Let's try that again. There we go. And it's just sort of like, you can see, it just has this little tie at the top. Um, another way you could do this is you could just have the needle go from the top to the bottom of the heart and tie it together and then do the same from the top of this heart to the bottom of the next heart. So it's really um, whatever feels easiest and most natural for you as a family. And I'll take the next heart, I'll use a yellow heart, and again I'm going to pierce through the top of the heart. 
pull the needle through and then I'll make that figure four. Now, and I'm going to slide my needle through the loop. Okay. And then you can see that the heart is suspended. There's three in a row. That's probably how many I'm going to do for this particular mobile. And I think actually I will use, yeah, I'll use this branch. Now, maybe you start at one end of the mobile first. It's really up to you. And then you'll just circle the floss around the mobile and bring your needle through that loop. Okay, and then you'll probably want to do some sort of knot at the top again, whatever kind of knot you're comfortable with. And then you can get a scissors and just snip off that top part and you have one strand of your mobile created. Um, let's do one more just to sort of give you another chance to watch how I did this. Um, I'm going to start with an orange heart and your hearts can be different sizes. I think that's kind of charming when they're a little bit different, um, when they're different sizes, different colors. And then again, as the mobile moves in the winds, you get a different perspective every every time that it moves or that you move. So again, knot the end of your embroidery floss and then just pierce the top of that heart, pull the heart to the very end, and then we'll do our next heart. I'll just go right in the order of the rainbow. I'm going to pierce the top of this heart and pull it through. Oh, this heart's dangling. Not quite up and down. So, you know, every project is a little bit different. You sort of have to troubleshoot and get creative with problem solving. And that heart, this heart might have um, benefited from being a little, maybe by having the heaviest heart on the bottom. So keep that in mind when you're working. Sometimes when um, you have these like inconsisten inconsistencies come up, you are able to adjust and you learn. So let's do our blue heart next. We'll pierce the top. And then again, <clears throat> make a figure four. I'm going under, I think it's easier to lay this flat on the table. I'm just holding it here so everyone can see. But um, so it's kind of like a cross, I'm kind of um, creating a cross or a T. And then I'm going to go under the floss and then just pull, pull, pull. And the heart is secured, now they're dangling. And then I'll just do purple. I think it's um, kind of nice in mobiles when you have varying lengths as well. So maybe one row has three hearts, the next has four, the next has two, just so it has a little bit of more um, organic rhythm as it moves across the, the branch. So again, we'll pierce this heart, the top of the heart. Again, make that sort of figure four loop, bring the needle behind. And now we've got another strand. Um, I will attach this right in the middle. I'm just going to come around, create a loop, bring my needle through. And then just be wary that as you're making this, um, the hearts, the columns of hearts may get tangled together. That did happen to um, the mobile that I have hanging in the corner. So they do have a tendency to get tangled. So maybe don't put them 
right in um, a window where there's a lot of breeze because they probably will get tangled together. So I think more of an indoor mobile, um, sort of in keeping with the hearts that are posted in windows while we're all inside, we're still spreading that sense of togetherness to those who are outside of our homes. Let's do one last row. I have one more piece of floss that's already threaded and it's got that knot at the bottom. And because, let's see, I did all the rainbow colors. I think I'm gonna start with red again for the next column. So again, really get creative with how you are organizing your hearts in their columns. So the knot will be secured at the back of this heart. And I'll pick a different sized heart, a little smaller heart. I'll pierce the top of the heart, come through, make that figure four loop. And again, if that doesn't work for you, you can just be creating these little chains in between the hearts that are like two or three inches, just knotted at the back of each heart. Um, and you can always use a hole puncher too if that's easier for you. And here's a yellow heart. You can see that it was just a watercolor, basic a, wa a watercolor wash. If you have watercolor, you could do this with markers and crayons too, where you just sort of um, put down some design elements on a piece of paper that you cut apart into your heart, sh heart shapes. So again, we'll make that figure four come through. This is suspended into a nice column. And then we'll attach our last wind chime row, or our mobile row, I should say. And I like to stagger the height, the length of each column. So it's like short, long, and then medium at the very end. But really, it depends on how big your branch is. The branch that I made, for an example, that's in the back corner, that was a pretty big branch, so there are five rows of hearts, so which obviously means that they, you have more hearts to cut out ahead of time or um, more things to write um, for which you are grateful. And another option is you can leave the hearts blank for right now, and maybe as a family you can go through and every day write down one thing you're grateful for. So that's another idea. Leave them blank and you can... Always just um, fill them in as you go, and that can have a different sort of um, effect as well. So there is another mobile that's sort of um, reassuring that we're all in this together. And then this is Earth Week week and Earth Day week, I should say. And so it's kind of nice to have this stable earth element as the base for which we're hanging these hearts. Okay, thank you so much everyone. I wish you the best. Thanks for watching.